On the news, gunmen kills scores abduct several Chinese nationals in Niger State. Administration will not compromise. President Buhari will trade resolve for credible 2023 poll. And FG laments inactive refineries in the country, says it's unable to subsidize diesel. Many thanks for joining us on News Now. I am Abisola Adebayo. Gunmen have killed an unknown number of persons, injured and abducted many others, including four Chinese nationals in an attack on a mining site in Ajata Aboki Gurumana ward of Shiroro local government area of Niger State. The co-convener of Consent Shiroro Youth of Niger State, Sani Abubakar Koki, as well as the Niger State government, confirmed the incident in separate statements issued on Thursday evening. According to the statement, a large number of casualties were instantly recorded at the mining site owned and managed by Chinese nationals as the AK-47 rifle-wielding terrorists gunned down their victims at sight as well as shot sporadically into the air. In a separate update, Koki revealed that the death toll continues to rise, adding that almost 30 security agencies Agents, rather, have been discovered in the bush and confirmed dead. While reacting to the incident, Governor Abu Bakr Sani Bailu commiserated with the families of the victims, saying security agencies will intensify efforts to make sure the perpetrators are brought to book. The defense headquarters has said that its airstrikes conducted in Zamfara State last week eliminated over 80 terrorists. Director of Defense Media Operations Major General Bernard Onyoko, who disclosed this during the bi-weekly update on the armed forces of Nigeria's operations between the 16th to 30th of June 2022, also revealed that 4,770 terrorists surrendered in Borno State in the period under review. General Onyoko explained that troops of forward operation Base Bakura in Zamfara State under Operation Adaring Daji responded to distress call of terrorist activities at Rafin Dankura in Bakura local government area of the state, where they engaged the terrorists in a shootout. Among other feats, Onyeko also revealed that the troops fought activities of illegal bunkering and recovered over 3 million liters of automotive gas oil, crude oil, as well as premium motor spirit, also known as petrol. On 21st June 2022, troops of forward operation base Bakura Operation Hadar and Dari responded to distress calls of terrorist activities as, at Rapin, Dankura, in Bakura, local government of Lampara State. Troops engaged the terrorists in shootouts who were trying to ab abduct some civilians. After the encounter, troops were able to rescue six kidnapped civilians and neutralize two bandits in the process. Items recovered include two AK 47 rifles, one tag six hand grenade two cell phones and the sum of 211,000. Similarly, troops made contact with marauding terrorists at Megora in Paskari local government area of Katsina State and in the process, two of them were neutralized. Following reports of planned attack at Kofaldanya village, the air company mobilized to the location, citing over 150 terrorists were converged in the thick vegetation. Consequently, Various Nigerian air platforms were used to engage the terrorists in heavy bombardment which destroyed their camp and consequent feedback indicated that Kofaldanya, the camp of the terrorists were destroyed and about 82 of them were neutralized. On 25th June 2022, a combined team of security agencies led by 302 Artillery Regiment Kaida Raid Operations on high that of the proscribed dependent people of Piafra and Eastern Security Network camps at Kopo in the Nehu local government area. After a fierce gun battle, two of the criminals were neutralized. Several items were recovered from their camp. Moving on, the House of Representatives Committee on Downstream has summoned stakeholders in the oil and gas sector to an investigative hearing over the scarcity and rising prices of premium motor spirit petrol, diesel, and liquefied petroleum gas in the country. Speaking at the hearing, the lawmakers lament the high price of diesel, as well as the scarcity of petrol in the country, calling for an immediate intervention to cushion the effect on citizens. There's details in this next report. 
Acquiring petroleum products in Nigeria, as in recent times, become an increasingly expensive affair. The increasing price of diesel, most especially, is causing widespread anxiety for businesses and homes that rely on the product to power generators that make up for the unstable power supply in the country. The price of the product have jumped from about 260 naira per liter late last year to over 850 naira per liter in June, putting unprecedented stress on the economy, thereby threatening its ability to produce goods and services. Authorities say the situation is alarming and something must be done urgently to cushion the effect on citizens. But stakeholders in the Nigerian oil and gas sector clarifies that there is little or nothing that can be done. They say the outrageous price reflects the current reality of the international market impacted by the Russian-Ukraine war, among other things. But members of the House of Representatives insist that the situation cannot continue this way, urging stakeholders in the oil and gas industry to find a lasting and impacting solution to the problem. With no clear roadmap on how to get out of the current challenges just yet, a deep sense of uncertainty looms over the country. Authorities and citizens can only hope and pray that an end to the conflicts raging on thousand miles away will bring succor at home. Abisola Adebayo, TV360 News. Still on the meeting of stakeholders in the oil and gas sector and members of the House of Representatives, the federal government says it regrets that the petroleum refineries in the country are not working while ruling out the possibility of introducing subsidies on automotive gas oil. The chief executive officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Melek Yari, during his address, explained that the reality of the situation is that Nigerian refineries are not working, but the government is intensifying efforts to change the situation. He also added that the 
authorities could not afford the payment of subsidies on diesel, which inevitably means the price of diesel might not decrease anytime soon. Meanwhile, joining me on the news to discuss this further is TV360 Special Correspondent Deji Badimosi. Thank you for joining us on the news, Deji. First, I'd like, to, I'll, I'd like you to react to that statement by the NMPC CEO, Melikari, saying that the government regrets the fact that the refineries in the country are not working. What do you think about that? Well, I think what uh, the uh, uh, GMD of NNPC said is, is, is actually true um, to, to, to a large extent. Uh, one of the reasons why we continue to face difficulties with, with uh, petrol or diesel, if you like, is, is the fact mm -hmm. that um, our refineries have not been working for quite a while. Now, what we know, for instance, at the moment is that those refineries are undergoing rehabilitation, at least two of them. We know of the Potakot refinery and the Kaduna refinery that they're going, uh, they going through, um, well, what the government says is, is a comprehensive uh, rehabilitation. Uh, don't forget that uh, the government budgeted, I, I remember for uh, the Port Harcourt refinery, I think $1.5 billion. So we, 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 what we understand is that work will be completed on the refinery. Uh, maybe, I, I think uh, it's, it's a three year, it's a three year maintenance, but uh, hopefully, uh, the expectation is that the refinery will become operational, at least begin to produce a certain capacity, uh, maybe by the end of uh, this year or, or, or some, mm. some, some time next year. And the expectation also is that the Dangote refinery would soon begin operation as well. The expectation is that um, the Dangote refinery will begin operation maybe by the end of this year or first quarter of next year. Don't forget that refinery has a capacity uh, uh, to, to turn out 600 and it's a 650,000 uh, barrels per day refinery. It's the largest in Africa. So when that refinery becomes operational, uh, maybe we'll now begin to uh, take a breather because at the moment, uh, diesel, which of course, you know, has been deregulated, is largely imported. We, we don't uh, refine diesel here. So the government spend, I mean, NNPC imports uh, this. Uh, anyway, marketers actually import the diesel, but the marketers, of course, have been complaining that it's been difficult to access Forex. Uh, of course, to access Forex now, they have to go to the CBN. The CBN hasn't got enough in its reserve now to, to give to these marketers. So most times uh, they get their Forex uh, from the black market. And uh, if they get their Forex from the black market, it's a no brainer that um, the, the cost will be factored into how much people buy diesel at uh, filling stations. And that's the reason why uh, you had all the stakeholders, including the NNPC during that uh, public hearing uh, or that ad hoc mm -hmm. hearing now, all of them calling on the CBN to provide Forex. But then um, the, the, the lasting solution to all of this is for us to begin to refine uh, these petroleum right. products right. at home. For as long as our refineries remain moribund, well, we Deji, will continue there, to there's have this back problems, and forth so. about the ridiculous amount of diesel. But the truth is, we honestly cannot continue this way. So, what measures do you think the government can actually put in place to cushion the effect on citizens? Well, the quickest measure, I think, it's it's uh, what uh, all the stakeholders who attended that uh, hearing now uh, put forward. All of them, if you listen to all of them, uh, at the end of the day whether from the NNPC or from uh, the, the, the marketers, they were basically asking that um, the Central Bank of Nigeria provides Forex because, you know, what if the Central Bank of Nigeria was to provide Forex, of course, that Forex will be cheaper. It will come at the official rate of, say, around 420 uh, Naira now per dollar as against the over 600 Naira per dollar that they would get, uh, they would get this uh, Forex now in the black market. So when they're able to get this Forex at the official market now of, say, $420, uh, the price of diesel will, will definitely come, come down. Don't, the, the reason they need this Forex is for them to be able to import. So uh, the, the short term, and, and that was actually made clear, the short term is for this Forex now to be provided. That's the CBN should literally mm -hmm. provide dollars, sell dollars to them, at, uh, at the official rate, that way, when they get the dollars cheaper, they'll be able to uh, buy uh, right. the product and then sell them cheaper. But if they have to go to the black market to source their Forex, where they have to buy dollars for as, as high as 600, 610 
uh, there's no question at all that the price of uh, diesel will continue to remain high. It's the same thing we see with petrol. But the question now is, has the CBN got the dollars to sell to these marketers? The truth is that the CBN hasn't got the dollars. You look at the, the external reserve of uh, the CBN, it's, it's not really huge. So if the CBN were to sell dollars to these uh, marketers, say, almost on a weekly basis, then you can imagine how much uh, the, the reserve would be depleted, and that, that would be a problem. So it's, it's a challenging situation. The country is not earning much in terms of uh, dollars. You know, um, our oil production level has gone down, and uh, the major, that's the major source of well, our, our forex earning. Uh, so it's 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 a difficult one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no doubt, it's a, difficult no doubt one, a, but, a difficult one. Well, that's the I'm sorry, this is how much we can take on the news this time. Thank you so much for joining us on the news. Moving on, 38 Nigerians have again been deported from the United Kingdom by the UK authorities. The deportees arrived in the country through the Murtala Mohammed International Airport about their home charter flight early on Thursday morning. They were said to have been accompanied by four diplomats for the purpose of avoiding any misinformation from the deportees. According to reports, the deportees included some lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender people, popularly known as LGBTQ, who travel to the foreign country to seek asylum. Other deportees included females and males whose deportations were attributed to illegal traveling, expired papers, and other immigration-related offenses. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari has promised Nigerians in the diaspora that his administration will ensure smooth transfer of power come 2023. The president gave the assurance on Wednesday in Lisbon, Portugal, while meeting with representatives of Nigerians living in the country, citing the last gubernatorial election in Anambra and Ikiti State. The president noted that this administration has proven consistently its zero tolerance for interference in elections and insistence that Nigerians should be allowed to vote for the party and candidate of the your choice. Our correspondent, Simisola Adegun, has the details. The general elections draws nearer. There's been continued demand for free, fair and credible electoral process in the upcoming polls. Even Nigerians in the diaspora are not left out. On the sidelines of his trip to Portugal for the United Nations Ocean Conference, President Mohamed Buhari met with Nigerians in the country. At the meeting, President Buhari reiterated his administration's commitment to ensuring the 2023 election is free, fair and credible. He says his government will not compromise on doing the right things to enhance the welfare of Nigerians, home and abroad. All eyes are now on the 2023 elections in Nigeria. Our administration will do its best to ensure that the Independent National Electoral Commission delivers peaceful, transparent, free, fair, and credible election next year. We also look forward to a smooth transition to the next government. As I have said before, our administration will not compromise on doing the right things and the welfare of Nigerians and Issues of the welfare of Nigerians in the diaspora also took center stage at the meeting. Commending Nigerians living in Portugal, the Nigerian ambassador to the country, Alex Enan Kefa, explained that the embassy will not relent on its efforts to ensuring Nigerians in the country are well taken care of. Most Nigerians, for the fact that we are foreigners here and uh, we, we do not, our, lang our native language or our official language is not Portuguese language. We have this issue with where, how raising up our children in schools where they would be able to speak English fluently as well as speak the Portuguese language as well. That is why this, uh, uh, this administration has one of its priority, as one of its priority, the setting up of a Nigerian school, a Nigerian house and a Nigerian hostel system to key into the tourism industry, the education industry, as well as the accommodation challenges of our people. That is the huge uh, uh, dream we have, and that is the project we, are, we have already begun. And we want Mr. President's support as much as possible, sir. On her part, Chairman of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NITCOM, Abike Dabiri, said the commission is also working tirelessly to ensure that Nigerians in other countries contribute to the development of Nigeria in all sectors. Many Nigerians are now investing in um, Medicare. A lot of them are building their hospitals back home in Nigeria. ICT, 
agriculture, education, and the food business. And you know, we have the Diaspora Investment Summit, which is a platform for them to come together. So a whole lot of things. We follow up through you know, the contacts we're making with them. And every time they come, when there's a problem, we're there for them. In his closing remarks, President Buhari urged the diaspora community to continue to be Nigeria's ambassadors at large. He also promised that the federal government will continue to do everything possible to catalyze development in various fields of the nation's economy. Simisola TV 360 News. We take a break now, but still to come, FG accuses terrorists of sabotaging efforts to rehabilitate the country's greed. Details of this story and more right after this break. Resilience. Look at you. Still standing after adverse politics stop your electric power burgers from powering our city. Still standing after adverse politics denied our city and your government revenue allocation for years. But you diligently turned it around and made our city self-sufficient and left a legacy of urban renewal and prosperity till this day. Now, you emerge tops with magnanimity and victory. Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, fight for us in the spirit of resiliency to deliver Nigeria from poverty and insecurity. The indomitable economic development agent Nigeria needs now. Watch this space. Welcome back. Here is a recap of some of our top stories tonight. Gunmen have killed an unknown number of persons, injured and abducted many others, including four Chinese nationals in an attack on a mining site in Ajata, Boki Gurmana, ward of Shiroro, local government area of Niger State. According to the statement confirming the incident, a large number of casualties were instantly recorded at the mining site, owned and managed by the Chinese nationals, as the AK-47 rifle wielding terrorists gunned down their victims at site as well as shot sporadically into the hair. We also told you that the federal government says it regrets that the petroleum refineries in the country are not working while ruling out the possibility of introducing subsidies on automotive gas oil. The chief executive of South the Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, Meleke Ari, during his address on Wednesday, explained that the reality of the situation is that Nigeria refineries are not working, but the government is intensifying efforts to change the situation. He also added that the authorities could not afford the payment of subsidies on diesel. Well, in case you missed any of our news bulletin or for more updates, do log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Google Plus at TV360 Nigeria on Facebook or at TV360 Online. Confirmed cases of COVID-19 from 55 African countries have reached above 11 million. The numbers were compiled by scientists at John Hopkins University using statistics from the World Health Organization and other international institutions, as well as national and regional public health departments. South Africa has the most reported cases of over 3 million with over 100,000 deaths. Other most affected countries are Morocco and Tunisia with over 1 million cases each. Meanwhile, over 300 million vaccinations have been administ administered across the continent. Well, we'll take a break now and return with more stories and business. Opinions are free, facts are sacred, the truth is universal. How in practical terms? 
can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? The president must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad region, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa forest. On Digi 360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. Welcome back. Simi Sola Adegun is standing by to give us the latest in the world of business. Simi, over to you. Thank you, Abi Sola. Welcome to business. The federal government has said efforts to ensure steady power supply nationwide are being frustrated by terrorists who are vandalizing critical power infrastructure in hard-to-reach areas, especially in the northeast. Minister of Power Abubakar Ali disclosed this to State House correspondents while briefing on the outcome of the Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju at the Presidential Villa Abuja on Wednesday. During the briefing, the minister also says that 10 mobile substations and 10 power transformers have been purchased and will be installed in strategic parts of the country to improve electricity supply nationwide. Since uh, December or thereabout, we have been uh, improving on the speed, uh, which led to the uh, procurement of uh, the 10 uh, mobile substations and the uh, 10 uh, power transformers, which I followed up on that with a team. We went to Germany in uh, uh, April, sometime in April. And the good news now is that they have just invited us for the factory test of the, uh, the uh, power transformers, which around uh, uh, 28th or 23rd of this month, will go to, uh, uh, July, will go to uh, Turan in, 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 in Italy. That is not all. Uh, this is just for the quick win, uh, for the uh, first one of the, of the delivery of the intervention, which uh, is going to be in three phases, as you are aware. Now, the first one is to get the quick win. So as soon as we get these 10 transformers, we have been working and I will have identified where we are going to install them across the country so that they give us the the, the, the initial boost that uh, we have been seeking for. We'll take a short break here and be back with stock market reports. The Nigerian Stock Exchange has reversed losses of previous trading days appreciating by 0.03%, ending in the bulls on Thursday to wrap up the month of June. The stock market's performance indicators all share index inched up 15.11 basis points to close at 51,817, while market capitalization stands at 27.9 trillion naira. University Press Limited and Mark Nichols PLC topped the gainers list with 4 naira 61 cover. On the flip side, PZ Nigeria and Triple G and Company Limited occupy the bottom of the trading table, both losing a total of 10 naira 47 kaba. 107 listed equities shared a total volume of uh, a total of 223 million volume of shares valued at 3.873 billion naira at uh, in 4,213 deals. 
Stocks on global indexes fell sharply on Thursday as investors continued to weigh the ongoing impact of inflation, central bank rate hike, and the overflow of second quarter earning reports coming in a few weeks. So all our select stocks, the UK's FTSE, ended at, in the red at 1.96%, the Dow Jones 0.41%, and Japan's Nikkei at 1.54%. Investors are hopeful that the month of June will turn out better. That's all on Stock Market Report. Back to you, Abisola. Thank you very much, Sinisola, for that update. Moving on, the UN Special Envoy for Congo warned that the M23 rebel group have continuously acted as a conventional army during escalating military action in the country's volatile east, which could threaten the UN peacekeeping force charged with protecting civilians. The UN Security Council, Bintu Keita, discussed this to the security. On Thursday, Keita added that if the M23 continues its well-coordinated attacks against the Congolese army and the UN peacekeeping force known as MONUSCO, the mission may find itself confronted by a threat that goes beyond its current capabilities. Keita, however, reiterated that the deployment of the regional force authorized at a recently held meeting in Kenya will complement UN peacekeepers' efforts. The M23 offensive has had a major impact on civilians, causing the death of 23 people, including six children in May and June, and displacing more than 170,000. In sport, FC Barcelona has received a financial boost that should see their salary cap increase significantly after selling 10% of their La Liga TV rights for the next 25 years to an investment firm. The deal sees FC Barcelona generate capital gains totaling €267 million Euros with investment group's Sixth Street Partners, making an initial investment of €207 million. Euros. The investment group will subsequently receive 10% of Barca's domestic TV rights revenue until 2047. Barca's need for a financial injection was urgent due to the financial year ending on June 30. Well, that's the size of our bulletin this evening. Thank you for watching.